Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church on this sixth Sunday after Easter, otherwise known as Mother's Day or Graduation Day if you're downtown. Service this morning is Holy, Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, found on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us begin. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And on this Mother's Day, we praise you for each woman in our life, for her faith, for her courage, for her creativity, for her laughter, and for her leadership. May you bless each one with the joy, grace, wisdom, and peace that only can come from you. In this precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. The first lesson for this morning comes from the book of Acts, beginning with chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely, extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown god. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all men, nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he had lots of time for their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are the God's offspring, 
We ought not to think that the deity, deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the kinds of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has a fixed day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all raising, rising from him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalms 7 through 18. Bless our God, you people. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies right over our head. We went through the fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you with my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. But it is better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. In order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which he went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and in the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, my friends, the book of Acts is filled with miracles, visions, and dreams. And in it, the author, Luke, helps us to establish the identity of God and shows us how the gospel of Jesus Christ was spread to every corner of the world. And in addition to teaching about the identity of God, Luke has much to say about the power of the grace of God and the initiatives God takes in forming witnesses for the mission. Luke, you see, has penned for us a roadmap to being a witness for the God we know. And the second part of the book of Acts focuses on the story of Paul. And so that's where we find ourselves this morning in the sixth Sunday of Easter. Because as you heard Marge read just a little while ago, Paul said to the people in Athens, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things, and from one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. You see... We are familiar with Paul, and he's known for his eloquent speeches and great witness to Christ, and there is so much more that we can actually learn from him. And following his conversion experience, he became one of the greatest teachers ever, indeed, one of the greatest evangelists ever. And Paul's view of the spiritual life can serve as a kind of foundation for the contemporary evangelical spirituality. You see, Paul knew God. And Paul was in a right relationship with God. And when you're in a right relationship with someone, you want to defend them at all costs. And this, this is exactly what Paul was doing in Athens. 
You see, he realizes that the Athenians do not know much about anything because they do not know the first thing about the God that Paul serves. And he goes on to do something very important, mind you, that we in the modern church can recognize, understand, maybe even appreciate. Even though he was deeply distressed by all the idols in the city, that he did not get up on a large rock and point his finger at the people of Athens, telling them that they would go straight to hell because of their idol worship and their non-Christian ways of living. No. Rather, Paul speaks to their culture, through their culture, in a way that acknowledged their worthiness as children of God. You see, he was a true witness to the God that he served. And Paul begins to tell them about this unknown God that they are already trying to worship. And note that Paul does not condemn the Athenians for who they are, nor does he begin to separate them, but he starts to show them what it is that they actually have in common. And remember that the next time that we are witnesses to the God that we know. You see, Paul knew God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew God as the one who keeps promises. He knew God as a God of second chances, a God that saves, a God that can convert. He knew God as the God of love. And Paul told one group that God was a living God who made the heaven and earth and the sea. And he told the people of Athens that he was the one in whom we live and move and have our being. But my friends, the questions this morning become, who do you know God as? Who do we know God as? You see, we cannot tell of something or someone that we do not know. And as Christians, we know God as a way maker, as a provider, as the author of the books of what we call life. The God we know is fair and just, generous and good. Our God is a loving, healing God, a right-on-time God. The God we know is a forgiving, gracious God because heaven knows we do not get it right all of the time. You see, we know God as Redeemer, Reconciler, Restorer, and Resurrector, just to name a few. That is who we know God as. And as God, as the God we serve, proves this over and over and over again. The God we serve places the right people, the right time, it makes things happen in giving an, uh, us unmerited favor. And the God we serve makes a way when there seems to be no way at all. I saw this on the front steps of the church one day. Of all in the middle of all that concrete out there, one single solitary flower found its way through the step and blooms. Surely a sign that God can find a way when there seems to be no way at all. But my friends, sadly, there are individuals who do not know this God. Painfully, the knowledge of the God we know is not everywhere that we turn. Because people do not really know who God is and what God has done or can do. God, you see, for some is only a God to question or to blame or to accuse or even curse when things go wrong. And many people believe that God is some sort of vengeful deity that must be appeased by good behavior just, just in case. But this is not the God that Paul was proclaiming that morning. No. As Paul tells us, there really is a God who loves everyone, and especially you and me, and yes, even our enemies as well. A God who came to serve us. A God who has given everyone life and being, and is interested in every little part of your life, no matter how insignificant you may think that might be. God's love, God's care, God's identity have been made abundant and clear in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that God should be known to everyone, everywhere. 
And therein lies our responsibility as Christians. We must bear witness to the God that we know. And the person and work of Jesus, all the doubts and the fears and the anxieties over the unknown God, happily then disappear. You see, God is not distant. God is not an uncaring God. No, God is very close and personal. That's the kind of God that God wants to be. So who do you know God as? Who do we know God as? And my friends, do we live and move and have our being in God? You see, we cannot tell of someone accurately if we do not know for ourselves firsthand. You cannot give directions to a place if you do not know where it is. Similarly, we cannot share a God who we do not know for ourselves with others, or those people too will become lost. You see, we are charged with being a witness for the God we know, and we are charged with telling somebody about this God. And tell people about the love of God that has shown us in Jesus Christ. Our God should no longer be that unknown God. Our God, you see, is too good and too generous to remain that way. And God is the God who is known by loving kindness to us, shown in the one who lived and died and rose again so that we too might live with God. And each time that we approach God's altar, we are saying we believe. We believe in a God whose only begotten Son died for us all. We are saying, God, you are in me and I in you. My friends, it does not stop there. No. When we make our way to God's altar and ultimately out of the doors of this church back there, mind you, that, as you've heard Jenny repeat over and over again, and the dismissal is where our work begins. We are called to be witnesses to the God we know. And our lives and our beings and our very essence should always, always reflect that. It's like the hymn writer penned, inspired by the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus, tell out my soul the glories of God's word. Firm is God's promise and God's mercy is sure. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forevermore. And with that thought, one last one. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Standing, let us reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 in your book of Common Prayer. Together we say, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of what being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling as we are able, let us pray the prayers of the people, Form 4, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer.
Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Today we pray especially for my heart, presiding bishop, Ruth, our bishop, Fred, our priest in charge, Judith, our deacon, and Shawan, our candidate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor another one, honor one another, and serve the common good. Especially we pray today for Joseph, our president, Henry, our governor, and John, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. We lift up to you this morning, Gladys Love Allen, Carol Buck, John Dash, Gail Healy Davis, Aaron Harvey, Mark Holliday, Norm Johnson Jr., Robert Gordon, the guy in the town King, Parker Linder, Maxine Lindsay, Dwayne Harvey Prayer, Lisa Robinson, Jim Phil Schaefer, Francis Sullivan, Jean Turner, Mary Wallace, James Warnsley, Roger Williams Jr., Barbara Young, and Brilliant James, along with those we name and those within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today in our diocesan cycle of prayer. Prophets for the Episcopal Church. The prophets of the Church and the Prophets of West Africa. West Africa. Flowers on the altar given to the glory of God by Monica Hammond in memory of Shalane Simmons. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will may be fulfilled, and we pray that you may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace.
Episcopalians. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day again. Happy Mother's Day. You can tell it's graduation week in downtown Charleston because it's like partial hell here, which is good. Welcome to all of our guests this morning. Welcome to our guests watching us on live stream this morning. Good to have you here. Good to have you with us. Hope you're comfortable at home and everyone's doing well. I know this is Mother's Day and some of you have plans and you have luncheons to get to, so we'll make the announcements rather short if, you do, if that's okay. Just to let you know, there are carnations in the narthex back there as you're leaving, please. Mothers and mothers-to-be and whatever the case may be, help yourself to one of those carnations. And Front Porch Fellowship is set up for this morning, so please stop by the table, say hello, get to know the ladies, and they'll get to know you as well. Which reminds me, if you have one of those welcome cards, fill that out if you don't mind. Drop that in the plate so that we can get to know you as well. That would be good Good to have. Your phone number, your email, whatever way you want to connect with us, we'll be happy to connect with you. Let's see, I know that uh, you have a lot of listening meetings going on in Zoom and with the Canons right now, with the diocese, which is good. Fonzo wanted me to point out something to you in the bulletin. That cancellation that they were having for Wednesday evening is uh, actually for this month, the month of May, not the month of April. But just to let you know that they will not be having that meeting on Wednesday, correct? And they'll let us know when that comes back to play. We'll put that in the bulletin for you as well. Flip that page over and you'll see there's still some listening sessions that have been scheduled with the diocesan canons and they're happy to do that. We had one for us uh, last Tuesday. It was a good hour and a half, almost two hours. They got a lot of information that they wanted from the churches, which is good, good to have. Let's see, um, we good on counters this morning? Good? All right, we're good on cameras this morning. So with that, uh, anybody with a birthday this week? All right. And, sorry? I do. You do? Okay. I <laughs> do. Come on down. So while she's doing that, let's turn to page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. There we go. So it's your birthday and school is out now. Yeah. That's great. What are you going to do with yourself this summer? Uh, work. Oh, man. All right. Here we are looking at prayer number 51 on page 830. All together. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her where she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may the peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, her Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Anybody with an anniversary this week? No? That's all right. I know that the weddings are coming back fast and furious. I did one yesterday. It was a first for me. It's the first time I've ever had to do the vows in Chinese. So half, half the service was in Chinese, half the service was in English. And uh, we did it live stream out of St. Luke's, just around the corner. And uh, so while we were doing the service at 4.30 in the afternoon, it was being live streamed back to China at 4.30 in the morning. And so that was kind of neat to watch and to see all the phones lined up there and, and got to visit with the families back in, in China. So think about that. If you know if somebody is having an anniversary, let us know. And we'd love to be able to have you come down and be a part of it. Again, enjoy your Mother's Day. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
those that reside in heaven, and those that are yet to be. The Lord be with you. Lift up the hearts. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you along the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. And may the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.